This week, a tete-a-tete with Arsenal's professor of football who's happy to freewheel on most subjects. Farewell, Anelka. How will Bolton and Gary Megson adjust to life without their top scorer? And the smiling Dane, Martin Lassen's injury-free season is producing goals galore for him. Arsene Wenger is Arsenal's most successful manager. In the last 11 years, Wenger has guided the Gunners to three Premier League titles, four FA Cups and one Champions League final. As the longest serving foreign manager in the history of the Premier League, the Frenchman continues to have an enormous influence on English football. Arsene Wenger, Arsenal manager, thank you very much for talking to Premier League World. You've been at Arsenal since 1996, but what was it like growing up in Strasbourg and, and how supportive were your parents of your football career? Well, uh, my parents wanted me to study, like any parents, and uh, I must say I grew up in a little, what you call here, pub, you know, where the headquarters of a club of a village was there. So I heard only talking about football since I'm a little child. And that certainly must explain my passion. There were, after that, I always imagined if I have a choice in my life, I will be in, in football. And I mean, but did your parents want you to go into their own business? Was that right? Yeah, they wanted. And uh, I first wanted, uh, I studied economics as well, but uh, the coincidence of my passion certainly and the luck I had to meet people who gave me a chance to become a coach and uh, first in youth teams, after in uh, senior teams, changed my life. For two years you managed in Japan. How did the Japanese culture shape your philosophy as a manager? Well, it, it made me uh, more patient, uh, more respectful, certainly, and uh, less aggressive. And uh, it helped me as well to uh, really uh, learn what is important for me in life, uh, because you take a distance a little bit with your uh, hectic life in Europe, and uh, you sit a lot on your own in a culture that you don't know. And usually, it, uh, I think it has a positive impact, because it makes you more tolerant with people. You learn what you take for granted in your own culture. It's not necessarily the only way to live. And uh, I must say I was very early confronted with that because I had the bicultural inference. I lived uh, near the German border, so I had the inference from the German culture, from the French culture. And that was, it is very deep in my uh, body, you know, that uh, you have to accept any culture because there's good and bad in every culture. Often new managers bring in their own staff, but when you took over, you kept the core group of personnel, people like Vic Akers, Pat Rice, Gary Lewin. Why was this? When you arrive into a new culture, I experienced a massive change from a French culture to a Japanese culture. And uh, I realized how important it is to be surrounded by people not to make massive mistakes who can alert you on uh, the different cultures, differences uh, of culture between uh, your own home country and the country where you work. I felt as well that uh, at a club with such a tradition like Arsenal, it was very important to be uh, always surrounded by people who have uh, that deep culture in their genes. <laughs> and uh, I must say, with uh, Pat Rice especially, who has played here for years and years, I got that because he's my closest assistant. So, after all these years, I mean, do you actually feel French or English? I feel uh, still, of course, French, but uh, I, I feel more I'm a world citizen who uh, has an open eye to uh, the positives and the, and the negatives anywhere. And uh, there are certain aspects I think I prefer English culture and some aspects uh, where I prefer French culture. But it's very interesting to to notice that uh, I, I feel you can exchange that kind of experience with people who have worked all over the world as well, because they have exactly the same feeling. You don't, you're not completely at home anywhere and not completely, completely foreign anywhere. 
I'm not completely at home anymore in France, but as well, uh, basically what becomes your home is your house, where you go, where you live. Back in 1996, how confident were you in your own vision for Arsenal? I was confident that it could have an impact if I was given time, but uh, I was quickly conscious that uh, I needed short-term success to get to my longer vision of, uh, of the club. And uh, so I decided first not to change too much and to change as little as possible in the first season and try to get the best out of the team. I changed more of the environment of the team and the way we practiced. And then I thought the second step would be to change the way the team plays. You revolutionised English football with your new training methods, but where did your ideas and beliefs come from? Well, from, from beliefs that I, how I feel uh, sport should be, uh, sportsmen should act, live and uh, behave, and uh, as well have diet, uh, prepare. Uh, I studied uh, a few years, you know, uh, through science, through training methods, through diet, nutrition, and uh, I put that all together and try to make it available for a football player. This season's title race is promising to be one of the most exciting contests we've seen for some time. Does the team leading the table at this time of year have a psychological edge? Well, at the moment we are point uh, equal level with Man United, so that means it will be very, very tight. Chelsea is just four points behind, have bought new players. It, it, I agree with you in one thing, it will be the most exciting title race for years because it was always only, at this period of the season, a two-horse race, never a three. It will be exciting, and but as well maybe uh, to win the Premiership this year will be the biggest achievement any manager can, can do. In the Arsenal Opus book, you've stated that you fear your dark side. Can you explain this statement? Well, my dark side is a really, really, uh, uh, an obsessive side and uh, uh, hating to lose side and the wanting to win at any cost that I have to master a little bit, you know. And uh, so, therefore, I learned to deal with that side of myself and uh, to uh, calm down and not to show any exterior sign of, uh, of uh, passion too much because uh, I'm a little bit uh, feared of what might come out sometimes. <laughs> In football, managers come and go, but are you surprised at the turnaround of managers this season? I'm surprised, but uh, I, I believe there's a logical explanation behind that because uh, uh, it's the first time since I'm in England that uh, the ownership of the clubs has changed so much and certainly that instability of the ownership explains the instability of uh, managerial staff as well because one provokes the other one and uh, it looks like we are in a, going into a new world where the rules are changing and uh, we go from the era where the, the supporter become successful in life and buys the club of his dreams to an era where people who want to invest in the game come into the game and uh, they rule the clubs now like they see a business. When Thierry Henry left last summer, some critics predicted that, that Arsenal would struggle without him. Did you ever think that would be the case? I think it could be the case if a team uh, uh, let uh, itself down mentally it would not be the case if the team responded in a positive way that say, OK, we lost a superstar, but let's, that's as well a good opportunity to show how good we are and let's uh, try to compensate the, the class that has gone by putting more together and uh, by uh, showing uh, that we are capable to take initiative. And in fact, that's happened. And uh, that's always very difficult to measure how much you lose when such a player of such a calibre leaves and uh, how well the team will respond to that. But I was pleasantly surprised. Arsenal now have a new generation of young English players coming through the academy. As a manager who perhaps has been criticised in the past for signing too many foreign players, how satisfying is this for you? It's very satisfying because you want as well. Uh, I would love to be, uh, not to be remembered as somebody who only uh, has brought out uh, foreign players because I don't look really at the passport of the player. If a player is English and is good, I play him. But uh, 
I felt that uh, English f England for a while was behind in the development of the young players, and uh, unfortunately they paid for it because uh, today the Premier League is rich enough to attract uh, the players from all over the world. But now it has been changed, rectified, and in the next four or five years we'll see very good young English players coming through. People do say that you never shut off from football, but do you ever actually find time to relax? I mean, do you, someone said you walk your dog, is that true? Yes, I do. But uh, uh, I believe that uh, a manager, even when he walks his dog, he thinks about the game. <laughs> it's a, maybe one of a privileged moment. He can think about it as well. But I, I, uh, it's true that uh, people can reproach that to me, but maybe certainly to many managers. And as well, I must say, uh, when I watch football games, I don't feel I work. I feel I enjoy it. So I never feel that it is a, a, a problem. Arsene Wenger, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.